we have been in Columbus, Georgia for some time now. And I kind of touched on this early on when we first got here. Columbus sits right on the Chattahoochee River. The Chattahoochee is a big deal here. In fact, the Chattahoochee River is the westernmost edge of the state of Georgia. On one side of the river, you have Columbus, Georgia, but then on the other side, it's a whole different city. In fact, it's even a whole different state. On this side of the Chattahoochee River is Phoenix City, Alabama. And Phoenix City is actually gonna be the topic of today's video. At one time, Phoenix City was nicknamed Sin City. Now, this was before Las Vegas was dubbed as such. The Phoenix City was nationally, all over the United States, it was known for its rampant crime and its corruption. How can we so soon forget the lessons that Phoenix City taught us? Well, today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about the history here from Phoenix City, Alabama. Through the 50s, when there was so much crime and corruption here in the city, and then Phoenix City as it stands today. Obviously, there's a lot of noise and that's because I'm standing right near a major highway. But, uh, I mean, this is a really crazy story. It's uh, the story of uh, war, a mafia stranglehold on a rural Alabama city, and then a city full of people that they just absolutely refused to give it up to the mob. I got the words, I got the tune. I've been rehearsing under the moon, but I got nobody to hear my song, so I'm humming to myself. Phoenix City, Alabama's history actually goes way back before the events we're going to talk about today. During the Civil War, what is Phoenix City now was divided up into two different towns. The north side of town, which included the river and all of that, was named Gerard. And the south side of town was named Brownsville. In 1923, the two towns were joined and from that point on it was called phoenix city alabama there's no exact record that says why they named phoenix city phoenix city but many people believe that they named it phoenix city because the mill here as you can see at one time it was named the eagle and phoenix mill there's a uh, meal one there and meal two here you know it was either named after the meals or it was named after that the fabled bird the phoenix but a lot of people would tend to think that they named it phoenix city after the meal even though phoenix city is actually in alabama and this meal sits on the georgia side so it's kind of crazy but uh it looks a lot different now but Phoenix City was mostly always rural, kind of like what you see over here. The residents, they, they, they really didn't have a whole lot. They would wind up walking across the bridge over into Columbus to do their shopping and eating. They would, they would walk over to Columbus for their distractions. Now, just before Gerard and Brownsville were conjoined into Phoenix City, Columbus built a brand new military training base, which as you can see here, it was named Fort Benning. After World War I, the soldiers who were returning to Fort Benning, they would be out over here in Columbus shopping and eating and partying, spending all their money in Columbus, Georgia. Well. Phoenix City, they wanted a part of it as well. As it stood, Phoenix City, Alabama was broke. It was a rural area. They, they had virtually no income. So in 1940, they allowed two men from outside to bring entertainment 
into this river town. Two men, Jimmy Matthews and Hoyt Shepard, were allowed to open casinos down the main street here. And they had hopes that it would make money for the city of Phoenix City. Now, they have long been tore down. There are some old pictures you can see of some of the casinos that used to sit right here in this area that are completely gone now. The thought was the casinos would come in, it would bring all the soldiers over from Fort Benning, the city could tax these casinos, and voila, Phoenix City had instant income. What the city leaders didn't know though was the two men that they tasked to run this operation. They were both members of a major organized crime family. And along with the casinos, they brought with them a lot of crime, prostitution, and uh, just about anything else you could imagine. At one time, this, in, the, all of these empty lots that you see right here on Main Street, this was all casinos. And as you can tell by some of the rubble that is left behind, a lot of it's been torn down, but you can still find some remnants left behind of this dark time in Phoenix City's history. Within just a few short years, these casinos and these brothels all together, they were bringing in more than $100 million per year for the crime families. Well, Phoenix City was taxing them on that $100 million, which was making them a lot of money in return. Well, because this was a crime syndicate operation, it really didn't take long at all before they started buying people off. The sheriff, the sheriff's deputies. At one time, there wasn't even a single police officer in Phoenix City, Alabama, that wasn't on their payroll. They infiltrated schools, politics, anything and everything they could to have an advantage, to have leverage over Phoenix City. They bribed, they threatened, and at times they even hurt people. To, to prove to the citizens here that they could do anything so people would turn a blind eye, so they would look the other direction. Their main target was the soldiers at Fort Benning. More than 100,000 men and women circulated through Fort Benning. At any given time, there was more than 100,000 people on base. That was their prime audience. That's who they wanted because these guys would come in, they would spend all their money from the U.S. government in their casinos, and then they would get deployed somewhere else. They would have to leave shortly thereafter basically the the mob saw dollar signs they saw a money printing press here in phoenix city and they took advantage of it at one time there was actually more illegal slot machines in phoenix city alabama than there were in all of las vegas nevada which is crazy absolutely crazy and what's even crazier is that the Phoenix City, which is Russell County, and the state of Alabama, they all turned a blind eye to it until it was too late. They let the corruption of Phoenix City, Alabama go on until the mob had just about influenced and infiltrated all parts and aspects of the city. As I said earlier, there was no officer that wasn't on their payroll. There was no politician that either wasn't directly involved or that wasn't being paid off to look the other way. Phoenix City, Alabama had changed almost overnight from this small rural community to this metropolitan area filled with casinos and brothels and crime. No one who lived here for long periods of time, none of them wanted Phoenix City, Alabama to become the sin city of the south but at the same time no one had the courage to stand up to the mob well no one except for as it turns out one man a man named albert patterson who was a local lawyer here in phoenix city albert patterson refused to follow along with the mob's orders one day the mob went into what was a local sporting goods store. At one time, sitting right here on this vacant lot, there was a local sporting goods store. Now, Albert Patterson represented this sporting goods store. 
and the owner was a friend of his. The mob went in, they tried to extort the owner of that sporting goods store. They tried to make him basically give the mob part of their profits. The store owner's name was Hugh Bentley. Albert Patterson and Hugh Bentley teamed up and they vowed to stop the mob by any means necessary at all cost. There's more good in the community than there is evil. I feel like that it's a dirty, filthy coat that I inherited from my father that I don't want to hand down to my children. Albert Patterson, he stood up to the mob, fighting them every chance he had. Elections would come around and they would rig the polls to put their favored people into office and he was there several times throughout his confrontations with the mob i mean he was physically beaten up i mean bad till he was bloodied nevertheless albert never backed down well once the mob found out that hugh was helping albert the mob went out for retribution they went to hugh bentley's home and they set off a bomb that destroyed Hugh's home. No one was killed, but one of Hugh's children was blown about 50 feet across the yard from the blast. That explosion caused Hugh Bentley and Albert Patterson to try to search for an alternative way to fight the mob instead of meeting them head on and facing them face to face. From that moment on, they decided that Albert would run for attorney general. Now, this made the mob absolutely furious. They knew if Albert were to be elected the attorney general of Alabama, he could shut them down. And he would shut them down. It was inevitable. If he was elected, that's what was gonna happen. He even ran on that platform. That was his whole shtick. If he was elected, he was going to shut down the mob in Alabama and clean up the crime. On election day, the residents flocked to the polls in droves to vote for Albert Patterson. Albert won big league. Big league. Big league. Big league. The mob tried to fix the election. They tried to tamper with the votes. They tried to add votes. They tried everything they could to counter Albert Patterson becoming attorney general. But they underestimated how badly the residents of Phoenix City did not want them taking over their city. They underestimated how mad the people were that these mobsters, these gangsters had come in and, and trashed their city. Well, as soon as they announced that Albert Patterson had won, the mob, obviously, they, they couldn't stand for it. They could not let it happen. They were furious. So, one night, Albert Patterson was in his office here in this building. He was upstairs there in his office. It was about 8 p.m. He went to leave. He walked out of that door and started walking over to his car, which was parked right here beside his office. And just as he made it to his car and opened the door, shots rang out. The deputy sheriff of Phoenix City, Alabama had opened fire on Albert Patterson. Patterson made it to about right here, right next to this first glass pane that you see here. He made it from his car that was parked right there to about right here before he fell. He passed out on the ground and died instantly. And yes, you heard me correctly. He was shot and killed by the deputy sheriff of Russell County who got his orders from the mob to shoot and kill Albert. It sounds nuts, it really does, but it is 100% true. There's even photos that uh, you can see. Actually, I think there's one on a placard over here. I'll, I'll walk over there in a second, but there's photos you can see of uh, the aftermath, the crime scene here after Albert Patterson was shot and uh, you can see his car there. But uh, this is the spot. Albert Patterson was shot and killed right here in June of 1954. Now, if you look at the pictures, these two buildings look exactly the same. 
this building here was still a cafe in the 40s and 50s it had a little thing coming off the front of it that said cafe instead of just a painted on version but it was still a cafe and it, the the brickwork looked exactly the same as it on both buildings the brickwork looked exactly the same so uh it's very easy to match this up very easy and then as i said over here on the placard uh all right so here's that that corner there of the cafe he made it to right here in front of that corner before he passed out and then you if you look here's another shot from that night where there's his car there's albert's car it would have been sitting right there in fact that picture there was probably taken from about right here at this same angle well with with the i guess with some zoom maybe it was taken from about right here I don't know, I guess it could have been a little up higher, but it's pretty close. Now, uh, they celebrate Albert Patterson here in Phoenix City. In fact, they even have a statue of him sitting right here on this bench. It's located right here, right across the street from what was Albert's office. They ha now have a placard out front dedicated to Albert Patterson. After Albert Patterson died, the state of Alabama began to take notice. The governor of Alabama almost immediately declared martial law. This was one of the, the only times in United States history that martial law has been declared inside the United States of America. He brought in the Alabama National Guard under General Walter J. Hanna, whose nickname was Crack, because of his shooting ability. He was a crack shot, so uh, they called him Crack. General Hanna came into town and he shut it all down very quickly. I mean, they arrested the corrupt people of Phoenix City, Alabama by the truckloads, the mobsters, the gangsters, the people who were being paid off by the truckloads. The, they, hadn't, they didn't even have enough room to hold because there were so many people being arrested. The jails were full, it, it was crazy. And, and it wasn't just like your average Joes either. I'm talking city councilmen, lawyers, doctors, policemen, anyone who was being paid off by the mob. When Hannah's men came in, they rounded them all up. They originally came in and pulled hundreds of dead bodies out of the Chattahoochee River, which is it's just right here. The mob, anyone knowing that General Hannah was coming in and knowing that prosecutions and indictments were going to be handed down, the mob killed off anyone that could talk, basically. So they pulled hundreds of bodies out of the Chattahoochee. Even still, though, the state of Alabama and Russell County still indicted more than 700 people. It, it was a lot of people that were involved in the corruption of Phoenix City. And when they handed out all those indictments, I mean, it, it was they ranged everywhere from conspiracy to racketeering to all I mean all the way up to murder so it was at this point that Albert Patterson's shooting was investigated and Albert Fuller the chief deputy sheriff of Russell County was arrested and charged with Albert's with Albert Patterson's murder General Hanna's National Guardsmen then went uh, door by door they carried out all of the gambling equipment and threw them into piles just out in the middle of the streets and then they set it all on fire they wanted everyone to know that uh, the the dark days of Phoenix City's history was over over the next year Phoenix City and Russell County held new elections to replace all of the officials that had been arrested for corruption General Hanna oversaw all of it to make sure no corruption seeped in again. The cleanup of Phoenix City even made national news that magazines from all over the country reported on it. It even made the cover of Time magazine. They made a Hollywood noir style movie loosely based on the events that took place here in Phoenix City. It's titled The Phoenix City Story, but the events were loosely based on the, the true facts of the story. As I said, most all of the casinos and brothels, those buildings have since been tore down. 
uh, you can still see a few remnants of them. For example, if you look here at this lot in front of me, this was one of the largest brothel casino hotels that, uh, that set here right off the side of the banks of the Chattahoochee River. And uh, this is all that remains of it now. This is it. Just some brick and mortar in a small layer just in this corner. That's it. Over the years since that dark time here in Phoenix City, uh, the, most all of the people that were responsible for it, they have passed away now. Most of the people that live here in Phoenix City, they probably don't even know that these events took place here in their hometown, what, uh, over 70 years ago now. They probably have no clue. It's just faded away into history, just mostly forgotten from consciousness. Now, instead of the whole country knowing Phoenix City as a place of sin, if you've heard anything about Phoenix City in recent years, it was because it was good things. It was low crime rates. Uh, multiple times now, it has been voted one of the best places to live. Back in 1999, it was probably one of the first major recognitions since the city had been cleaned up. He's took it up! Phoenix City beats Tom's River 3-2 and wins the U.S. National Championship. Phoenix City's Little League team, they won the National Little League World Series and uh, it was all over the news. It was a big deal all over the country. And even to this day, Phoenix City, Alabama is constantly ranked in the top 25 among the safest cities to live in all across America. It's gotten that reputation now all because one man dared to stand up to the mob when no one else would. We have good people in this town and they were under bondage and they had to have freedom and it just took it, it took something terrible to get people to wake up. I would like to think Today, he would surely be happy with uh, how it's turned out. That is going to do it for this story today on Phoenix City, Alabama. The Phoenix City story, Albert Patterson and, uh, you know, the Sin City of the South. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed the story. If you're new here, go down and click that subscribe button. You could take it a step further, hit that notification bell icon, that way you get notified every time I upload a video. If you want to help support the channel, you can check out the links down in the description box below. That's always an option as well. And really though, I just want to thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it. I will be back again tomorrow. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Please stay safe and stay healthy. I got the words, I got the tune. I've been rehearsing under the moon. But I got nobody to hear my song. So I'm humming to myself. Mm -hmm. I guess it just had to be. Won't someone listen to me? I got the words, I got the tune. I'd like to croon it under the moon. But I got nobody to hear my song. So I'm humming to myself.